Members of the media, we're now joined by from the University of Michigan, Eli Brooks, Hunter Dickinson, and Terrence Williams II, along with Coach Jawan Howard. Coach, congratulations. Can we get a brief opening statement? Thank you. Um, just want to say I want to take my hats off to uh, Coach Rick Barnes in Tennessee. Uh, it was a well-played, very competitive game, as you guys witnessed. Um, quick turnaround. <laughs> You know, to try to prep for Tennessee, that's not easy. Uh, they have so much balance on the floor from shooting, length, rebounding, and also one of the best coaches in college basketball. Um, really appreciate how our staff, with a quick turnaround, all hands on deck, helped me with the prep. Uh, I really admired how our players came out and competed from start to finish after being down at halftime. So, uh, Collectively, it was a total team effort. Once again, members of the media, we have two microphones in the back. State your name and affiliation. We'll start right up here. Chris Palace with Wolverine.com, On3.com. Hunter, Eli, can you just talk about the minutes that Terrence gave you down the stretch and how big that proved to be? Um, yeah, I mean, in practice and, and in the huddles, we talk about him being a dog, uh, being the toughest, nastiest out there. And those two rebounds, that, those pull bags were big. Um, to keep the momentum going. Um, we know he can do it, and um, I'm just happy for him. Hey, man, that, this, this has been my guy, you know, since like day one, since I've been starting playing b-ball. I've seen him make, you know, he's a prime time player, bro. I don't care, you know, how many minutes he plays, you know, no matter what, my man's going to make winning plays when he's out there. And he just did that today. And I mean, we don't win without Terrence Williams today. Next question right here, the white. Juwan, post game, you were seen consoling Kennedy Chandler in Tennessee. What can you say about what what you uh, told him? Well, you know, Kennedy. Obviously, we know he's an elite player, and he's one of the best guards in the country. And you know, in the chance to know Kennedy back when uh, my youngest son Jet and Kennedy played together in AU, um, and they won that actually uh, the LeBron James tournament in Ohio. So we've had a relationship um, back then. And just watching his growth, uh, I've always been impressed. Uh, we recruited him. Unfortunately, uh, <laughs> we wasn't that lucky. But uh, to see you know, the, the output, the effort, the growth, and being able to produce like that on the floor, uh, and how he led his team you know, in a special way. So I just gave him some words of encouragement. Um, it shows his emotion that he cares. And you know, as coaches, you, know, you, you appreciate that. Next question over here, the gray sweater. Michael Cohen with the Detroit Free Press. Eli, you made a lot of runners, a lot of floaters in your career. Uh, can you kind of walk us through the hook shot and how that possession unfolded? Um, I mean, I got I got a little deeper than I wanted, I, when I wanted to, and so I didn't have that great of an angle uh, for the backboard. Um, so um, the, the, the best option was just going straight to the basket. Next question, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin Sweeney, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Hunter, I know uh, Terrence and Jace were joking yesterday that you had been, you know, saying that you guys should scrimmage the managers to, to get get the loss out from. Yeah, we did. You, you, we you, did. You did. You did scrimmage yeah. the managers. See, Hunt was giving me some buckets out there <laughs> earlier today. Yeah. Uh, but can you kind of speak to how cognizant you guys were of that streak and, and what your message was as a leader of the team to to your guys about it? I mean, yeah, no, they, they put it up in our lockers before we left, before the Indiana game, um, you know, about the recent trend. And so we were well aware of it, um, you know, for a while now and something that definitely been wearing on us. But there's, there's no better time to break the streak than now, I guess. Next question, Black Sweater over on the right. For uh, any and all of the players, Bob Winowski, Detroit News. Uh, you're down six, and turnovers have been an issue, and Tennessee's defense is doing what it does. What, uh, what did you guys find there when you're down six with eight minutes left in yourselves? Uh, I feel like we just stayed connected during that time. Uh, like you say, we turned our ball over, and you know things were going our way. But you know, being the most connected team is what Coach Howard always talks about. And I feel like during that stretch, we were the most connected team, and we didn't go our separate ways, even though we were making mistakes. Next question, Burgundy, right here. Andrew Kahn, I'm live for any or all of you. Um, even if it, forget the streak of not winning two in a row, I mean, to play your best basketball now over these last you know, few days, 
when the season is on the line. I guess, how, how do you explain that, how, how well you guys are playing after kind of a roller coaster year? Um, I don't think we're playing our best basketball right now, like, our, to our potential. Um, we still have a lot of mistakes that we have to clean up, um, turnovers, mis uh, miscommunication. So um, that's, that's the scary thing with this team. Um, um, if, we, if we keep on staying connected, um, good things are going to happen down the line. Next question in the front, the red. It's Kyle with Sports Report Media. Hunter, question for you. Um, what's it like to play with these guys? I mean, Michigan's just been so strong in so many sports this year, but what's it like for you to wear that M and, and just think, man, this is my team? No, I mean, it, it means a lot. Um, you know, like, that's one of the reasons why I ended up choosing Michigan was, you know, the pedigree and, you know, like, the tradition of winning, like, you know, comes to football, basketball, hockey, you know, I mean, we got field hockey, we got, it just seems like everybody's winning at Michigan. And there's like a, there's a prestige that comes with wearing that block M that, you know, I don't take lightly and, and something that, you know, I wear, I wear proudly when I walk out here, you know, with the Michigan across my chest. Next question on the far side over here. Austin Meek with The Athletic. Eli, you've put that uniform on so many times in your career. As time's running down there, are you thinking about getting the chance to wear that uniform one more time? And what does it mean to you to, to get here after the ups and downs you've had this year? Um, I mean, yeah, that's, that's definitely in the back of my mind. But I'm just trying to live in the moment right now, um, cherish the time that we have with the people that are my, in my life right now at Michigan, um, and um, just enjoy the process of going through this tournament again and have that, having that chance of um, getting our last goal. Go to the back corner over here. Juwan, I do know you don't like to talk about uh, you know, personal feelings, but I did witness uh, the embrace between you and a couple of your fellow famous Michigan alums, uh, Chris Weber, Mark Hughes, at the end of the game. Uh, what, did, what did that mean to you? How important was it for you to share this moment with them? It's a beautiful moment to be here uh, and to witness you know, guys that I've been in the trenches with, um, Chris Weber, um, Jalen Rose, uh, Ray Jackson, and then to see my big brother, Mark Hughes, a guy that helped recruit me to come here to the University of Michigan. Now, Mark um, told me back when I was in high school that my years at Michigan would be memorable moments that's going to help mold me to the man that if I continue to stay here and grow, that um, I'll have a lot of success and become a champion. Um, to see them out here and you know, supporting this team and uh, taking time from their schedule, away from their families, uh, it means a lot. Uh, you know, I, I will never forget this day, and I appreciate you know, all the support they have behind the scenes been in my corner from day one. Stay in the back here. Hunter, your uh, stat line, 27 points, 11 rebounds, four assists. Uh, can you just talk about how proud you are of your performance today and, and what it means to take this team to the Sweet 16? Hey, man, like, you know, just being able to play in the NCAA tournament is just, you know, dream come true for any basketball player. It's something that, you know, we've been, you know, every, every kid grows up watching the NCAA tournament and, you know, just being able to play good in it is, you know, just an amazing experience. Um, obviously, being a big man, um, you know, you can't really just get the ball without, you know, your teammates. So obviously, I got to give a shout out to them because, you know, they find me in great spots. The coaching staff puts me in great positions to score. Um, you know, they make it easy for me out there. And making it, to, making it to the Sweet 16 is, you know, as literal as it is sweet because, you know, nobody believed in us. I mean, everybody thought we shouldn't even be in the tournament. And, and now, you know, people that, you know, are, were hating on us before the tournament are going home and about to watch us next week. Front row. Tom Crawford, Fox 47, press pass, Lansing. Uh, this for Eli or T. Will, uh, the three ball. Uh, I think Tennessee hit 14 on Thursday, uh, two of 18 from the perimeter. Was there – talk about the emphasis on, on protecting the arc and uh, how that uh, turned into a W for you. Thank yeah, you. Uh, that was mostly in the game plan, you know, guarding the perimeter. Uh, we, you know, they had shooters. The guard play uh, for Scobie is definitely a big uh, shooter. But, you know, one of the game plans was to guard the three-point line. I feel like we did uh, our job today in, in guarding that three-point line. As you just said, they went two for 18. And, you know, they're a good shooting team. So I think we did our part. Eli, you want to answer that too? 
Um, yeah, I mean, just to piggyback off T. Will, um, that was like the main focus. Um, I mean, don't run them off the line, stay down on shot fakes, and we did we did that. Um, so um, that was like the biggest key of the, winning the game. Over on the right here. Al Giancopoulos, Wood TV. Eli, you said that your team hasn't even reached its potential yet. What has to be done to reach that, that end there? Um, I think just making the simple plays. I think sometimes we get, we get sped up. Um, we play out of character. So um, just maturing in that aspect um, and trusting one another. We've got time for one more over here. Uh, a lot of kind of unusual things happened this season from the COVID shutdown to having to play some games without your key players to the, the incident in Wisconsin. I guess behind the scenes, can you kind of describe what the emotions were like throughout this year? Were there any moments that were kind of dicey for this team? And, and if there weren't, what held you guys together? Um, there, there wasn't really any doubt um, that this team is special. Um, and that, that starts with our coach um, believing in us um, and just the group of guys that are in the locker room. Um, we have a good group of guys that have the same, the same um, drive, the same passion. Um, and that's a credit to Jawan, the coaching staff, finding those guys out there that you like to be around. Um, there, wasn't a, there wasn't a second that anybody strayed away um, and bought into, the, bought into the system. And you know, we're in the Sweet 16, so um, it's, good, it's good to see. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck in the next round. Oh, sir. Go blue. Go blue. Great job. Go blue. Great job, big fella. Great job, Chief. Thank you. I can hit out. You, yes. Oh, you're, thank you're, you. You're dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. We'll go for, sorry about it. I'm, I apologize. Right here in the front. Chris Bellis, the Wolverine.com. And Coach, can you just talk about the decision to go zone there when they were getting downhill on you and how that changed the game? Well, it definitely helped uh, you know, keep uh, Kennedy Chandler as well as Ziegler out of the paint. Um, you know, the, like I mentioned earlier, they're very smart, crafty, um, fast guards that do a very good job of getting in the paint, making plays at the rim, and, and give you know, the bigs you know, also credit as well. You know, they do a good job of sealing uh, to keep our bigs on their back. But Musa, Hunter, um, there were moments when they attested the rim, made some winning plays, whether it was a block shot or altered some shots. But, you know, Kenny, he's tough, man. He's, he's one of the best guards we've faced all year. Front row right. Hey, Coach, Kyle Babcock, Sports Report Media. Um, Coach, you've been around the game a long time, seen a lot of things. What's special about this group of kids that have faced adversity and here they are going to the Sweet 16. And what does that mean to you? You know, it starts at home with their parents. You know, they've done an amazing job of uh, raising some fine young men um, that trust, that believe in uh, the leadership, uh, whether it's myself and the, and the other staff. Um, and there had never been a moment where one of our guys had been one foot in and one foot out. Uh, they bought into the culture and trusted the culture. And, and I've always you know, gave credit to the parents uh, of doing an amazing job of raising some fine young man. And yes, you know, that's one of the things that when I identify recruiting is character. Character is huge with me. Over here on the left. Uh, Zach Shaw, 24 7 Sports. Juwan, Jay said yesterday that uh, Eli's provided a nice blueprint for how to, I guess, step up your game in March in the NCAA tournament. What have you seen from him this week? on and off the court, uh, obviously with it being his last NCAA tournament? Well, I always said Xavier Simpson was one of the best leaders to ever put on a Michigan uniform. Uh, but I also have to give that 1A, 1B to Eli Brooks. Uh, Eli, um, you know, he's everything when it comes to being a Michigan man. Um, you know, what he's done on the floor, uh, what he's done off the floor, with his development, growing as a, as a man, um, you know, being able to adjust to different coaches, uh, Coach Beeline and then now myself. Uh, we've been together for three years. And, you know, this young man earned the right to be a captain at the University of Michigan because the way how I've seen him, how he's, his growth. And, you know, when he, it's going to be tough to replace a guy like that. You know, he's irreplaceable. And you know, if he ever won a job, 
Uh, if you ever want to join my, my coaching staff, if you ever want to get into coaching, yeah, I would truly hire him because he's such a smart player and knows how to play, and he has an infectious personality that people really enjoy being around. Go to Gray right here, and then we'll go to the back row. Juwan, you guys had you guys had Devontae from the start, but you didn't have him for, for too long. Can you kind of give us an update a little bit on, on how he is? And, and big minutes for Frankie again. The, the scoring wasn't quite what it was the other day, but he finishes plus 13. Well, I was told by my trainer at halftime that uh, he couldn't go in the second half. And that's all I can tell you. And, and with that, you know, health is everything with us. Uh, you know, it was truly hurtful to, to see, you know, that he couldn't come back in the second half because, you know, this kid, you know, he wanted to be a part of I been living for this moment, uh, the first time being in an NCAA tournament. But what he did in the first half was pretty impressive, too. Not having practices, uh, but then come out there and give everything he could. Uh, but Frankie stepped up once again, and you know, I, I recruited him. I know what he can do. And um, he's, they, they're different guards, um, but they, they both add something totally different that uh, I feel that you know, puts a lot of pressure on our opponents. Do we have time for one more, quick? Yeah, um, Josh Taubman, Michigan Daily. Hunter with 27 points tonight. Can you try to speak to his performance and going into the matchup with Tennessee, did you kind of feel like he'd be able to have his way offensively? Well, Hunt, you know, he, you know he's so humbled at that moment, you know, talking to you guys, because I know that sometimes when you see him on the floor, you may think he's arrogant, but he plays with a lot of emotion. But one thing he didn't say is that Hunter works hard, man. You know, he's behind the scenes. He puts in the work, and how I know because individually, him and I work together on, on player development, um, before practice, sometimes after practice, on off days, uh, when we allow to as coaches uh, to work with our, our guys. And so, um, when you put in the work, you know you're going to get good results. And you know, it's no surprise to me um, how he's been able to produce so far two years here at University of Michigan. Um, to come out and compete like the way he did today. Uh, I told him we were going to you on the inside. Um, you know, you're the backbone of our team and be ready. I also asked him to be greedy. <laughs> and what does that mean? Be aggressive. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank Go you. blue.